WWE Thunderdome will take over the WWE landscape beginning this weekend for WWE Friday Night SmackDown, SummerSlam, and Monday Night Raw. WWE NXT will still culminate from Full Sail University in Orlando as we have a jam-packed weekend of professional wrestling as AEW Dynamite will also be on Saturday night as well following the NBA playoffs on TNT. However, with it being SummerSlam weekend, Go Home Friday Night SmackDown, NXT TakeOver 30, SummerSlam, SummerSlam Fallout on Monday Night Raw, leading into the returning Payback pay-per-view a week from Sunday, one week after SummerSlam on August the 30th. As once again, it's another exciting time in the world of professional wrestling with the WWE introducing Thunderdome for the first time ever and Retribution wreaking havoc on Raw and SmackDown over the past few weeks. So we have Friday Night SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, NXT TakeOver 30, SummerSlam, Monday Night Raw all this weekend. But you may be asking yourself if you don't know, what is WWE Thunderdome? No more Monday Night Raw, no more Friday Night SmackDown from the WWE Performance Center in Orlando. They've moved shop to the Amway Center in Orlando, home of the NBA's Orlando Magic. Sort of the new WWE bubble. And the Thunderdome, from the looks of it, it's going to be a lot like what the NBA and NHL have done with their bubbles in Orlando, Toronto, and Edmonton. As during this pandemic, hopefully everyone's staying safe. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So the first ever WWE Thunderdome will be this Friday on Friday Night SmackDown on Fox, where we'll see AJ Styles defend his Intercontinental Championship against the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy. But the Thunderdome, a virtual experience, as we've seen as mentioned with the NBA and NHL playoffs, the Thunderdome will only be for Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown, and WWE pay-per-views. So SummerSlam, Payback, and then rumored Clash of Champions in September. WWE Thunderdome, a state-of-the-art set with video boards, pyrotechnics, lasers, cutting-edge graphics, and drones. Oh my, if you will. So very, very excited, as I believe everyone is, just to see how this is going to look on TV. They're obviously worried about ratings. They got to take the next step to do what they have to do to move forward and move on from the WWE Performance Center to get back to normal as we're all trying to do here in 2020. But as mentioned, NXTs and NXT takeovers will still be at Full Sail University. Also, from what I've heard for WWE Thunderdome, only about between 500 and 1,000 people were able to sign up for this virtual fan experience that'll begin on Friday on SmackDown. They posted a link on social media. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe as well. Links in the description below. You had to give your name, email, phone number. If you got in, they sent you a confirmation and basically told you, hey, be ready at this time. A WWE superstar will, in fact, host the event. And also, you have to watch the show from whatever device you are watching, say, SmackDown or the pay-per-view or Monday Night Raw on. You can't have, say, SmackDown, the pay-per-view, or Monday Night Raw on your TV in your room. You have to be watching via, say, your laptop or tablet, even your phone for that matter as well. So it's going to take a few test runs to work all the kinks out, especially with trying this out for the first time ever. I will have live reactions play-by-play -play all weekend of Friday Night SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, and NXT TakeOver 30, SummerSlam on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and then also Monday night raw so be sure to tune in live right here on youtube for live reactions play by play like follow and subscribe as always on social media hit that thumbs up button share on social media and uh, if you have chat questions or comments along with super chats or super stickers be sure to drop them in the comment section below so it's going to be a very very interesting and exciting weekend 
for pro wrestling once again but with Thunderdome making its first appearance and this to me seems like it's going to be the new normal because obviously they want to be setting up shop and renting out an arena a residency basically uh, for the next few months or so probably I would think until the end of the year at least um, until you know we can sort of get back to the normal ways that we're used to being normal if you will but uh, with Thunderdome uh, coming in Retribution also at the same time wrecking havoc as mentioned across Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown I think people were excited to see what's going to happen with that who's going to be revealed how are they going to attack again who they will attack so a lot unknown at this point in time but that's why we're here for uh, some predictions and previews for SummerSlam weekend with NXT TakeOver 30 and SummerSlam 2020. Now before I, myself, your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Colhan Luke 96 get into my preview predictions for WWE NXT TakeOver 30 and the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. You'll never see it coming. I believe that has something to do with Retribution, but we'll get more into that a little bit later on. just want to discuss what else is going on in the world of professional wrestling this weekend, as mentioned, with the WWE Thunderdome on Friday Night SmackDown, and then also the Fallout from SummerSlam on Monday Night Raw early next week. Raw Underground, now a thing in the WWE with Shane O'Mac. We also have AEW All Elite Wrestling Dynamite on Saturday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Time following the NBA playoffs. So on Friday Night SmackDown, the thing everyone will be paying attention to will be, of course, the debut of the new WWE Thunderdome. But we also, as mentioned, have a Intercontinental Championship match with the phenomenal AJ Styles and the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy. Then comes Saturday, AEW Dynamite. This Saturday, August the 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, following the NBA playoffs on TNT. They were not on last night, head-to-head with WWE NXT Go Home for NXT TakeOver 30 on Saturday. However, they will still be head-to-head on Saturday with AEW Dynamite TV and then a TakeOver event on the WWE Network. So we'll have to see what the numbers rating-wise is there early next week. But on AEW Dynamite this Saturday night, Two weeks before AEW All Out on Saturday, September the 5th, we will have an Orange Cassidy in-ring interview, a few tag team matches as well with FTR and Private Party, the Elite versus the Dark Order, also the final in the Women's Tag Team Tournament, along with Cody defending his TNT Championship against Mr. Brody Lee. Of course, then at that point, too, as mentioned, head-to-head with NXT TakeOver 30. Hard to believe this is going to be the 30th TakeOver special on the WWE Network. But, hey, when you have four or five, maybe even six of them a year, and they've been doing them for five, six years, it adds up. SummerSlam then on Sunday. SummerSlam Fallout on Monday Night Raw. Also from the, in quotes, Thunderdome, where we'll see Raw Underground potentially in its final appearance. Well, let's see what they do there because the Raw Underground thing was basically a, a backroom brawl at the WWE Performance Center. With them no longer being at the PC, we'll see what they do with Raw Underground. But with Shane O'Mac behind it, already advertising Dolph Ziggler and one half of the Viking Raiders next week on Raw Underground at the 10 o'clock hour or as they've had it every week so far, right before the 10 o'clock hour on Monday Night Raw. So who the hell knows, honestly. And then, as mentioned, a week from Sunday as well, a week after SummerSlam, we will have the returning WWE Payback. Uh, Before I get into TakeOver 30 and SummerSlam, for Payback on August 30th, I believe we're going to see a lot of rematches from SummerSlam weekend. We're also going to see some superstars not featured on either card 
say another Intercontinental Championship rematch with AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy, maybe even a triple threat or a fatal four-way or a five-way for that matter as well with some other superstars on Friday Night SmackDown. Rumor has it, as Triple H mentioned this past week, we're going to be having another WWE draft or a shakeup by the end of the year in the coming months. We'll have to see how that shakes out. But with that Intercontinental Championship match on SmackDown, not on SummerSlam, they then could put it on a pay-per-view the following week for payback. No SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, even though we're having a Raw Tag Team Championship match on Sunday at SummerSlam. So maybe Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura defend those at payback. King Corbin, Matt Riddle, we're going to get a match between those two eventually. I'm thinking it's going to be at payback. Um, And then already, and I'll get into it uh, coming up shortly, there's only one match official for payback, and that is the Women's Tag Team Championship match with the Boss and Hug Connection, the golden role models of Bayley and Sasha Banks defending against a to-be-determined opponent. So we'll have to find out and see who that is. But uh, a lot to figure out, a lot unknown, as mentioned, leading into SummerSlam weekend. But um, we have SmackDown, AEW, TakeOver, SummerSlam, Raw. Also have breaking news on Sunday during SummerSlam that you will not want to miss. So as mentioned, be sure to tune in to my WWE and AEW live reactions play-by-play this weekend live right here on YouTube for Friday Night SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, NXT TakeOver 30, SummerSlam, and Monday Night Raw. But breaking news on Sunday during SummerSlam, you will not want to miss. So with all that being said, let's get into WWE NXT TakeOver 30 and the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. We'll start off with NXT TakeOver Triple X as TakeOver will be on Saturday night and then SummerSlam on Sunday night. NXT TakeOver 30 as well is brought to you by For The Brand as Pat McAfee. The former All-Pro punter from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania via West Virginia University and the Indianapolis Colts as he'll make his in-ring debut against Adam Cole, Bebe, in a Pennsylvania showdown to determine if Sheets or Wawa is in fact better. As mentioned, McAfee from Pittsburgh, Adam Cole, the Panama City playboy from down around Lancaster, not Lancaster, and two, by the way, Sheets is in fact better than Wawa, if you did not know. But nonetheless, after the promo between Adam Cole and Pat McAfee last night on NXT, it'll be Adam Cole versus Pat McAfee at TakeOver 30 on Saturday, and Adam Cole will look to make Pat McAfee his bitch. We'll have a fatal five-way for the vacant NXT North American Championship. That'll, in fact, be a ladder match with Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, and the Velveteen Dream. Io Shirai will defend her NXT Women's Championship as well against Dakota Kai. Finn Balor versus Timothy Thatcher. And then the limitless Keith Lee will also defend his NXT Championship against the Bonnie and Clyde of WWE Karrion Cross with Scarlet ringside. Kickoff pre-show match will be Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch versus Brizongo versus Del Fon Tosma. So now officially six matches for TakeOver as two of these were just added within the past 24 hours. Del Fon Tosma is going to win the Triple Threat Tag Team Kickoff Pre-Show Match that will begin at 6.30 before the main card of NXT TakeOver 30 on Saturday night, head-to-head with AEW Dynamite once again. In my opinion right now, there's no way Io Shirai loses her NXT Women's Championship against Dakota Kai, but with all the women's superstars that they have in NXT... They could do what they have done as of late and have it bounce around, so to speak, until they figure out, okay, this is who we want as a champion. Rumors are Tessa Blanchard is either going to sign with the WWE and go to NXT, more so than not, or also 
go to AEW to align herself with her father in Tully, who's still, as of now, managing the former Perfect Ten and Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears. But when they made the move to have EO win, take over in your house back in June, at that point you think, okay, she's the one who's going to hold down the fort for the time being. She's going to be the top woman in NXT. She's going to be our women's champion. And that's that. Charlotte was there as a champ. Rhea was there as well. Charlotte's still on the shelf. Rhea's in the mix, but basically because she was already a champion for how long, they're giving Io the spotlight right now, which she absolutely deserves, no doubt about it. But it's all going to depend on what happens on Saturday at TakeOver for moving into the future for the NXT Women's Division as both AEW and NXT, both women's divisions are awful. And I've been over this, I don't know how many times before, and it's pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. Speaking of all the other women superstars that are in NXT, if you want to take the title off of EO, okay, that's fine. So be it. I don't think I would have a problem with it at the time of this recording. I don't think anybody, honestly, would really have a problem with it. And then you put it on Dakota Kai. She's aligned herself with Raquel Gonzalez. But then you go back into the Dakota Kai Tegan Knox feud that they just recently brought back up over the course of the past few months. So, as mentioned earlier, a lot unknown as usual because it really all depends on what happens during these pay per view events. I'm going to pick EO to retain, but I honestly really want to be surprised if Dakota Kai did in fact win however her promo last night that she cut after her match she sort of got the upper hand so normally when you stand tall you lose on the pay-per-view so that means eos more likely than not going to win so we'll have to see but i'm going to take eo and as always let me know in the comments below what you think of my preview predictions along with giving me your preview predictions for the upcoming WWE NXT TakeOver 30 and SummerSlam pay-per-view events this upcoming weekend. Finn Balor versus Timothy Thatcher in singles competition in a match that was just recently added as both superstars were unable to win their respective triple threat qualifying matches to enter the fatal five-way North American Championship ladder match. So Finn Balor, Timothy Thatcher now In a feud, it seems like Balor, though, during TakeOver events, very, very hard to beat. Thatcher also sort of got the upper hand during Balor's match with the Velveteen Dream in the main event of NXT last night. As Bronson Reed, Thick Boy, was out there along with Damian Priest, Punishment Martinez, Cameron Grimes, Trevor Lee, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream, Finn Balor, Thatcher out there as well as mentioned and they all sort of did their thing but with thatcher and balor thatcher put balor in the spot for dream to pick up the win which after the elbow off the top rope dream one two three your winner fifth and final entry into the north american championship ladder match but as mentioned with balor normally a surefire lock to win at takeovers, I have to pick Finn Balor to defeat Timothy Thatcher on Saturday at NXT TakeOver 30. NXT North American Championship ladder match has mentioned a fatal five-way between the thick boy Bronson Reed, and if he wins, we riot. Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream as well. Right now, my picks to win this match are Damian Priest, Punishment Martinez, and Johnny Gargano. However, if Velveteen Dream wins, I would not be surprised one bit. That's just WWE making a point, telling us fans they do not care what we think. With everything that has gone on with Velveteen Dream over the past few months. Especially with him returning just last week, winning a match... Defeating Balor then last night as well in this fatal five-way for the NXT North American Championship. A title he has already won. Put the title back on him. Would not be surprised one bit. 
However, I believe it's either going to be Damian Priest, Punish Martinez, or Johnny Gargano. And as mentioned, if the thick boy Bronson Reed wins, we riot. All he is, no offense by any means, all he is is another Otis of heavy machinery. And look what they've done with Otis since he won Money in the Bank. Absolutely nothing. Yes, okay, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville in a hair versus hair match on Sunday at SummerSlam. And Mandy's been with Heavy Machinery in that feud, as Sonya's been with The Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Braun Strowman also shaved his head, if you did not know. Braun Strowman defending against the Fiend Bray Wyatt in Sunday's Universal Championship match, also at SummerSlam. But I just don't see Bronson Reed right now winning or if ever the NXT North American Championship. Priest has been around for quite a while in the WWE now. They really haven't done anything with him. He's been in a feud with Cameron Grimes as of late it seems like. So okay you have either one of them win. You keep that feud moving along for the title though then at that point. Dream wins it. Okay as mentioned they're just trying to prove a point. But if you have Johnny Gargano win Yes, there's been rumors of Ciampa and Gargano being called back up to the main roster. Ciampa would do well up there, I think. Gargano's going to fail miserably. And that's one reason I just feel like he doesn't want to go back up there. Because they were already up there at one point, and they both got hurt, and they've been on NXT ever since. But there's rumors of them both going back up, and then Ciampa being part of Retribution, from what I've heard. However, I don't see that happening. If Gargano wins, and I've said this before, and then you still have Finn Balor and Timothy Thatcher basically involved in this feud as well, you might as well just add those two in to make it a a seven-way for the North American Championship ladder match on Saturday at TakeOver. I mean, why not? Yes, okay, I get they lost their qualifying matches, but especially with Balor and Thatcher as well, you're going to get a lot more high-flying spots and what you're probably going to get with this uh, lineup right now. But if that's the road that they want to take and these are the six matches that they're giving us for TakeOver on Saturday, okay, enough, so be it. But um, you have Gargano win and then you uh, start the DIY feud back up with Gargano and Ciampa for the NXT North American Championship because if you keep Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era around in NXT, along with Keith Lee and Karrion Cross at the NXT Championship main event pitcher, you have all your feuds mapped out. You have everything set in stone. And then, okay, probably they'll bring in a few free agents or they'll debut some guys that have been, you know, training over the past however long they've been there. But And, and people might have forgot about them or whatever the case may be. Kushida's somebody, though, that they have to do something with. Because if not, he's just going to turn into Shinsuke Nakamura. Except vice versa. It's going to be opposite. Because Nakamura was actually good in NXT. He was an NXT champion. And then he should have won the WWE Championship from AJ Styles at WrestleMania a few years back, but never did. And now he's in a tag team with Cesaro. Cesaro is just that one... Superstar, no offense to Zara. Zara is a damn good wrestler. He's just in these mixed tags that the, the tag team makes makes no sense, but then eventually they they keep booking it like that, and then they build chemistry, and then they shove it down their throats, and we just get used to it. So maybe if Kushida gets called up to the main roster, which I don't see that happening anytime soon, Vince will bury his ass uh, to begin with anyway. So the thing is with him, though, too, he sort of got put on the back burner so to speak because um, his tag team partner from New Japan and Alex Shelley that debuted in NXT back in January has since left and gone back to TNA and the Motor City Machine Guns are back in business as your TNA Impact World Tag Team Champs so the Good Brothers, the Big LG Luke Gallows, Doc Gallows and Machine Gun Carl Anderson are also there uh, as well, Sex Ferguson and uh, Chad Too Bad. Hopefully, you checked out my Talk and Shop Mania live reactions play by play a few weeks back on uh, August the 1st. And be sure, as mentioned, to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying, and be sure to tune in 
live right here on YouTube this weekend for live reactions, play-by-play -play of WWE Friday Night SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, WWE NXT TakeOver 30, WWE SummerSlam, and WWE Monday Night Raw on Monday night. So I think Gargano is going to win the ladder match. Long story short. And then they start the DIY feud back up and go from there. Adam Cole, Pat McAfee, that began back in March of 2018 after I had just witnessed my first NXT house show a few months prior and a month actually before I witnessed my second NXT house show. And videos from both events are right here on the YouTube channel, so be sure to go check those out along with the videos from other professional wrestling events that I myself have attended live in person, live in living color. And hopefully here before too long, we can get back to that. However, due to the pandemic, we are now living in the new abnormal. That's why the WWE is now introducing Thunderdome, as mentioned earlier, that'll debut on Friday Night SmackDown this week. So Adam Cole, Pat McAfee, singles match, NXT TakeOver 30. This will either be the third to last match of the night or the co-main event, depending on where they put the women's championship match with Io and Dakota Kai. NXT was in Indianapolis in March of 2018 on a house show loop. This is when Bobby Fish had got injured. They go back and forth, Adam Cole and Pat McAfee. This is on social media. I believe McAfee was actually um, in attendance for the show. Uh, but then afterwards, they went at it on uh, social media and whatnot, as um, superstars and celebrities do, for that matter. Obviously, a lot of time has gone by from then until now. However, in the meantime, Pat McAfee has been on NXT TakeOver kickoff pre-shows as an analyst alongside the last professional broadcaster in Sam Roberts. However, uh, as of late, his contract ran up and he's even uh, spoke about that on his Pat McAfee show that actually had Adam Cole on as a guest a few weeks back and um, it made sense at the time this is right before Pat McAfee was getting hitched Cole had just dropped the NXT championship to Limitless Keith Lee who's defending against Karrion Cross, and we'll get into that next but um, McAfee had Cole on interview was about 12 minutes long if I can recall correctly and um, towards the end of that things got heated McAfee yes being the person that he is was taking shots left and right subtle shots throughout the interview nothing too harsh if this is in fact the one off which it probably won't be because McAfee's been around like people are acting like he's never been in the WWE before He's been on how many NXT TakeOver kickoff pre-shows as mentioned. He was on WrestleMania 35 kickoff pre-show last year for Matt Life in East Rutherford. Uh, wearing dress shorts, too, by the way, that pissed off Vince McMahon. But nonetheless, Adam Cole obviously got mad, stood up for himself. Video is online, if you haven't seen it. Highly recommend checking it out before NXT TakeOver 30 on Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the WWE Network. Live reactions, play, play right here on YouTube. Be sure to tune in once more. At the time, yes, it looked like it was a shoot. A few days go by, still thinking it's a shoot. But then the following Monday, because this had happened on a Thursday afternoon, Cole was actually live in studio on the Pat McAfee show, live in Indianapolis. Makes sense, though, because Adam Cole just dropped the NXT Championship to Keith Lee, as mentioned, not doing anything, and we have a takeover event coming up. You still think it's a shoot, but then, as mentioned a few days ago by, that Monday, Pat McAfee had on the King of Kings, the game, Triple H. And at that point, eh, tides are starting to turn. You're starting to think, okay, this might be a work. They're probably setting something up between the two with all the history. And that has been the case ever since. So they basically fooled everybody from the get-go, from the start. Uh, but from the start, it was, you know wishwashy it was it was right there in the middle you really didn't know what to think and, and rightfully so but um that Wednesday on NXT then they started to show footage and 
at that point it clicks okay 100 percent full go now and then mcafee's on nxt sat beside tom phillips who's another pennsylvania boy towards the end of the show cole comes over water bottle mcafee though gets the last laugh his punt kick that's been brought back for the first time in quite a while as randy orton the legend killer himself is back using that along with his rko left and right now and obviously yeah pat mcafee being a a former all pro kicker and punter he kicked at west virginia and punted in the nfl with the colts it makes sense for that to be his uh finisher his signature move if you will mcafee kicked cole all to hell that's what they try to make it look like uh kicking his head off but he didn't even kick him in the head if you go back and watch the replay kicked him in the chest uh and then you had hbk and uh triple h and then michaels actually uh, got uh punt kicked on raw this past week as well from the legend killer randy orton and i'll get more into orton and mcintyre for the WWE championship coming up shortly uh with SummerSlam. but um other than keith lee carrying cross this Adam Cole Pat McAfee match is going to be the highlight of Takeover 30 this Saturday, no doubt about it. McAfee's going to bring in people that normally don't watch wrestling, and people that normally don't watch wrestling doesn't know who Adam Cole, doesn't know who the Undisputed Era is. They're going to pick Pat McAfee to win, which he might, he might not. I honestly don't know. It, it all depends on if he's going to be coming back, which he probably will, because he's been around for how long. But then it all depends on what they do with Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era as well. If they're going to call him up to the main roster or not. It's been in the demise of the Undisputed Era all year with Roderick Strong losing the North American Championship. Fish and O'Reilly losing the tag team titles. And then Adam Cole, the nail in the coffin last month, night two of the NXT Great American Bash event on TV, losing the NXT Championship to Keith Lee, who's defending against Karrion Cross, as mentioned. And I'll get to that once again coming up next. But um, the right decision would, in fact, be to have him win. However, in the process of all of this, this two-and-a-half-year history, two-and-a-half-year beef, with Adam Cole being a heel for the longest time, McAfee comes in, he's the heel, and Adam Cole is turning babyface. And if you don't see that, there's something wrong. So it, it, it all depends on as mentioned with all these matches of course all the time it's all going to depend on what happens M- McAfee's going to be able to go they'll they'll drag it out they'll make it you know at least probably 12 15 minutes i would think undisputed era will get involved uh aj hawk part of the McAfee and hawk show with pat McAfee, former ohio state buckeye and green bay packer will uh more so than not also get involved as he was on nxt last night uh, alongside Pat McAfee. So, um, excited to see what happens with Cole and McAfee, no doubt about it. But uh, it obviously all adds up and makes sense to have Adam Cole win, though, then when it's all said and done because they're going to turn a baby face. And that's what they want. Job's done. End of story. Keith Lee's time as your NXT champion could very well be coming to an end on Saturday at TakeOver 30. As he'll defend against Karrion Cross with Scarlet Ringside. This feud began about a month and a half ago following the NXT Great American Bash. Keith Lee was your new NXT and NXT North American champion after defeating Adam Cole. Keith Lee then dropped the North American title because basically he didn't need it. However, NXT needed it back more than he needed it to begin with. So... They had him drop the title. That's why we're getting the fatal five-way ladder match for the NXT North American Championship on Saturday as well. And then Keith Lee defends the NXT Championship against Karrion Cross on Saturday at TakeOver 30 as well. This will, in fact, be the main event. If it's not, there's something wrong with the booking. However, if, and I know I said with Adam Cole, Pat McAfee, It's either going to be the third to last match or the co-main event of the evening. If they want to play that out 
and McAfee is going to come back. It's not going to be a one-off. They're going to continue that feud then, have something close out the show that will have people talking, a potential Pat McAfee victory or a loss and then an attack after the match. They they could go a, a couple different routes there. But if Keith Lee, Karen Cross is not the main event, because other than Adam Cole, Pat McAfee, this match has been getting, along with the ladder match, for that matter too, has been getting the most attention on NXT TV over the past month and a half or so since the two-week NXT Great American Bash. They could go either way with this. Tick-tock, tick-tock. That's why I said Keith Lee's time as your NXT champion could very well be coming to an end. Karrion Cross is going to be the next big thing in the WWE. I still believe he very well could be the mystery hacker, and then the mystery hacker could very well be the leader of Retribution. So Keith Lee retains. Retribution makes their name known this weekend at SummerSlam to potentially close out the show maybe, or sometime soon after. Karrion Cross is your leader. It just, it all adds up. It all makes sense. It's the Bonnie and Clyde WWE. It's the apocalypse. It's the uh, TikTok. It's, to me, it just all adds up and makes sense. But everybody has their own opinion. So, um, you know, that could be another route, of course. I'll get more into retribution and um, what I think is going to happen with that when I discuss SummerSlam here uh, coming up shortly. That'll be uh, somewhat brief uh, due to the fact that, honestly, this year, okay, I get the Thunderdome and everything uh, for Raw, SmackDowns, and pay-per-views now moving forward. SummerSlam, though, this year, the match card, um, it just doesn't really intrigue me that much. Um, And this is coming off the heels of what I said to be at the horror show at Extreme Rolls, the best pay-per-view of the year so far for the WWE. So, yes, of course, all the time, booking could be ten times better. I've been over that, I don't know how many times before, too. So, the the match card just doesn't intrigue me that much uh, for SummerSlam this year, as in uh, years past. So, as mentioned, I'll I'll try to be brief uh, with the, uh, I believe, eight matches there. So, a total of uh, 14 matches for two pay-per-views this weekend, plus three TV events with AEW, Dynamite, and Raw and SmackDown. But as mentioned, yeah, I'll discuss more about Retribution here uh, coming up shortly. So, is it too soon to put the title on Karrion Cross? Yes and no. Uh, I mean, he's been around. They've been building him up to be, you know, the top guy. But the thing is, though, too, they just put the title on Keith Lee. So what do you do with Keith Lee if you have him drop the title? Do you bring him up to the main roster? I wouldn't have a problem with that, and I think he would succeed to the moon and back, uh, maybe even to Mars and back for that matter, uh, with his uh, performance, his showing last year during Survivor Series. Um, and, I mean, maybe they turn him heel and they keep this hurt business going and he aligns himself with MVP and Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley, MVP Apollo Crews for the U.S. title at SummerSlam. That's getting a bit boring if you ask me. They need to do something with that. But um, like I said, they could go either way with Keith Lee carrying cross. I'm going to pick Keith Lee to retain uh, just for the hell of it, just because they put the title on him uh, a month and a half ago, and it'd be stupid to take it off of him, you know, this soon. But it is carrying cross. It's it, it's not Jimmy Wang Yang or Doink the Clown, for God's sake. So um, going to be interesting to see what happens there. But, you know, like I said all night during this recording and, for most of my recordings and live streams, it all depends on what they want to do. It all depends on the booking and who they want to have when. Um, as it obviously, yes, is scripted, uh, they go out there nine times out of ten knowing who's going to win. It's not MMA. It's not boxing, even though that's what they're trying to make Raw Underground. But Keith Lee, I think Keith Lee has to retain this title. Uh, to make him look strong, because if he doesn't, unless they're going to bring him up, that's the that's the only way they get around it, because they'll make people forget that he was NXT champion for only a month and a half, 
and then dropped to Karrion Cross because at that point they continued to build up Karrion Cross and, you know, have him face off versus whoever. That's the other thing, too. You have Keith Lee drop the title to Karrion Cross. You bring up Undisputed Era with Adam Cole. You bring up Keith Lee. Okay, who does, other than Finn Balor maybe, or Velveteen Dream, who does Karrion Cross face for the NXT Championship moving forward? Because you got to look ahead. So, just some thoughts on that. Honestly, as mentioned, they could go either way. So we'll have to see. But uh, my pick is Keith Lee over Karrion Cross in the main event of WWE NXT TakeOver 30. SummerSlam then on Sunday. I touched on a few of these matches earlier. And as mentioned, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible. Just due to the fact, as mentioned, match card wise for SummerSlam 2020 this year on Sunday, August the 23rd, from the WWE Thunderdome, it flat out just does not intrigue me as it has in years past. The only two matches that I'm interested in are the Universal and WWE Championship matches with the Monster Among Men, Braun Strowman and the Fiend Bray Wyatt and the Scottish Psychopath, Drew McIntyre and the Viper, Randy Orton, the returning Legend Killer Viper edition of Randall Keith Orton as he's RKOing and punt kicking everyone. The only way they save SummerSlam is, and I believe... There's a very, very good chance that this actually does happen. They make a big splash at the end of the show with Retribution attacking and then revealing themselves to close out SummerSlam, leading into Monday Night Raw the next night. SummerSlam, though, Mandy Rose, Sony Deville, a hair versus hair match. The loser will have to get their hair cut. Sonya already cut Mandy's hair on SmackDown a few weeks back. So that technically means Mandy's going to win here and cut Sonya's hair, you would think. So we'll see where they go with that, but that's probably what's going to happen. As mentioned earlier, Heaven Machinery, Miz and Morrison in this as well. So Mandy Rose picks up the winner of Sonya Deville. Sasha Banks versus Asuka. That's for the Raw Women's Championship. And then Bayley versus Asuka for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And then as mentioned earlier as well, one week from Sunday, a week after SummerSlam on August the 30th, WWE Payback makes a return for the first time since 2017. It'll be the Boston Hug Connection, the golden role models of Bayley and Sasha Banks defending their Women's Tag Team Championships against a to-be-determined opponent. However, we already know who the real women's role model in the world of professional wrestling is and that is good old punks tawny phil's best friend in brett baker oscar's gonna defeat sasha oscar's gonna defeat bailey sasha and bailey are finally gonna feud because then a week from sunday at payback whoever they face i don't care if it's they teased oscar and Shayna baszler it might be the iconics it might be WWE's Shining Sisters with Natalia and Lana. Who the hell knows? Whoever it is, Bailey and Sasha, they'll end up losing their women's tag team championships as well. And then they'll feud. One of them will turn on each other because now we're in the Thunderdome. They're going to expect more people to be watching. So they probably think, at least I do, now's the time to pull the plug on it. Now's the time to move forward. They've been teasing it all summer long, for God's sakes. Like, you might as well do it now rather than wait another six months or a year. Um, but they teased Alexa and Nikki breaking up for the longest time. And then they sort of finally did um, with Alexa in the Strowman Bray Wyatt story right now uh, as uh, Sister Abigail, Sister Alexa from the Swamp Fight match that they had and then uh the fiend attacking on smackdown and just just everything there uh with that story so like i said they've been dragging this out but they got they got to uh find an answer here you would think sometime soon and if they feud um you know after SummerSlam here rumored clash of champions in september then hell in a cell followed by survivor series so 
We might have a uh, women's Hell in a Cell match, you would think, with Bailey and Sasha then at that point. And then, you know, maybe a 5 on 5 uh, Bailey and Sasha's team captains Survivor Series match of some sorts. Uh, something along those lines, maybe. Only time's going to tell. And whatever they decide to do for booking, you know, okay, so be it. But talk about dragging out and getting boring. This is the perfect story. And you folks are probably thinking the same thing. Uh, with me uh, going on almost 50 minutes for uh, discussing professional wrestling with everything going on this upcoming weekend. But as mentioned, be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying, uh, and be sure to tune in this weekend for live reactions, play by play. As mentioned, talk about boring. Apollo Crews as your United States champion, he needs to drop the title at MVP. I think he will, and then I think Bobby Lashley in the Hurt Business, along with Shelton Benjamin as your new 24-7 champion, once again, they'll split that up, uh, and then Lashley will turn, Lashley eventually, because I, I thought that a month ago, and I still think that, because the writing's on the wall there, because um, they had Lashley in a WWE Championship match against McIntyre at, uh, I believe that was Backlash, um, and, and that obviously didn't work out, and I knew it won it, uh, because Lashley is just god-awful. Uh, the Lashley lock as they're calling it, the Chris Masters lock, back in 2020 now. Uh, but um, Lashley turns on MVP after MVP uh, defeats Apollo Crews. I'm not saying he's going to turn right away. They might they might drag that out for a week or two and then set it up uh, for Clash or Night of Champions, whatever they're going to do this year, and then introduce a new pay-per-view or bring back an old pay-per-view. So we could see a, a ton of rematches at that as well in September, but with payback a week later... You know, still a lot of unknown there because really this is the first time uh, that they're doing what they're doing, uh, especially with Thunderdome. So, um, other than Vince, honestly, who the hell knows what's going to happen this weekend? Uh, this weekend could be three or four of the best shows that they've ever produced, or they could be three or the four worst shows they've ever produced. You would think it'd be on the the right side of things, um, but hey, you never know. I think us fans are just excited more so than not you know that virtually we can be once again part of the show so there's that Street Profits and honestly they are the best tag team in the WWE right now and that's not saying much no offense to uh, Montez Ford or Angelo Dawkins by any means but they they ran the poison angle with Zelina as the Street Profits will defend against Andrade and Angel Garza. And basically, this is just a rematch from WrestleMania that didn't happen because Andrade got hurt. So they could put the titles on them, but they need to figure something out with the tag team division as well up on the main roster. It's as bad as both AEW and NXT Women's Division, as mentioned earlier. So Street Profits to retain for the hell of it. Dominic Mysterio in his first ever match. Who knows how good he's going to be. Rollins will uh, will carry it for sure. However, with Dominic being Rey Mysterio's son and Rey going to be ringside, I mean, Dominic has looked pretty damn good in the ring for um, some of the small uh, maneuver sets that he's done, along with being able to talk on the mic as good as he has, promo-wise. There's no way in hell Dominic's going to lose this match uh, because then potentially, you know, Rollins and Murphy split and then they feud. Um, or, hell, Retribution could be more disciples for Seth Rollins. M Dominic Mysterio is going to win this match because Rollins defeated Ray at Extreme Rules, took his eye out, in quotes. Not for real, but okay. So Ray basically gets Retribution, if you will, gets payback, and helps out his son in defeating Seth Rollins at SummerSlam this year. I don't think there's uh, any more to it. Braun Strowman with his fresh haircut, his new shaved head, will defend his Universal Championship against the Fiend Bray Wyatt. This is in fact the rubber match between two former Wyatt family members. We could see the other two former Wyatt family members on AEW Dynamite on Saturday, but only time will tell for that. Strowman and Firefly Funhouse Bray faced off at Money in the Bank. Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt faced off in the Wyatt Swamp Fight match at the Horror Show at Extreme Rules 
that saw the return of the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Now, if the Fiend Bray Wyatt does not defeat Braun Strowman and recapture what he should have never lost to Bill Goldberg in the desert of Saudi Arabia back in February, somebody's going to be mad. And that someone is currently talking to you right now. If the Fiend Bray Wyatt does not defeat Braun Strowman, I will be mad. I believe everyone else will be mad because Strowman turning heel, he's getting boring as champion. Okay, Thunderdome now a thing. Potentially, yes, we could see some big returns. Big Dog Roman Reigns, Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar, maybe a few others, maybe some calls from NXT. Who the hell knows? Everyone's saying CM Punk's the leader of Retribution. I highly doubt it. You never know, though. Strowman wasn't even going to face Goldberg at WrestleMania for the Universal title until about a, a few days before because the Big Dog Roman Reigns pulled out due to coronavirus, and rightfully so. And we haven't seen Reigns since. So Strowman's thrown into this pitcher. He's the Universal Champion from April until now, and he needs to lose the title. He needs something else to do. You put him on Raw, though, I don't think it really helps him out. He's just that, I hate to say it, but he's getting boring, and he's just that one big guy that's getting stale, yet they keep holding on to him, and they keep inserting him into storyline after storyline after storyline. He's honestly not that good on the mic. He isn't. No offense to Braun Strowman by any means, but he's not. And he looks like Gene Snitsky in Big Show had a kid, for God's sakes, after he just shaved his head. So if the Fiend Bray Wyatt does not win, we definitely for sure riot. And hell, I might even exit out of SummerSlam and end the live stream and I'll flip more shit than what I did whenever Bray lost to Goldberg of all people at Super Showdown back in February. If not now, when's he gonna drop the title? If not now, when? The Chosen One Drew McIntyre versus the legend killer Randy Orton in the WWE Championship match on Sunday at SummerSlam. This or the Strowman Wyatt Universal Championship match will in fact be the main event of the evening. Drew McIntyre does not deserve to lose the championship. However, Randy Orton will win the WWE Championship for the 14th time in his career. The Legend Killer is back, folks. As mentioned earlier, he's been RKOing and punt kicking everyone. It all started back in June at WWE's Backlash, in the WWE's eyes at least, greatest wrestling match ever, where we saw Randy Orton and Edge. Edge has been on the shelf injured since then in came christian former tag team partner of edge down and out goes christian randy orton then took out the big show had rick flair by his side for how long going back years and years and years with evolution and then orton turns on the nature boy and then they bring out Shawn michaels the heartbreak kid himself who defeated rick flair at wrestlemania 24 and flair's wwe retirement match he then went on tna and orton hit HBK with an RKO and then a punt kick. So McIntyre's obviously uh, no legend to Randy Orton, especially when in real life Orton's light years ahead of him in the ring and in age for that matter too. So Orton's going to win the WWE title on Sunday at SummerSlam. This will be his first WWE title reign in almost a decade, dating back to when he actually won it in the main event of SummerSlam 2013. So pushing eight years, I get a decade is 10, but you get my point. Orton the month before Money in the Bank, won Money in the Bank. Triple H was the referee in the Daniel Bryan WWE Championship match. Orton comes out, cashes in, because Triple H, with his history with Evolution and Randy Orton, hits DB with a pedigree. Daniel Bryan still at home with his newborn son. Congrats to Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. So hopefully Daniel Bryan will be making a return sometime soon. They could go down that road again, yeah. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's been seven, eight years because then Orton won the title, cashed in his money in the bank. Orton then ended up losing in a triple threat that following April, WrestleMania 30. Because 
that December, that's when they unify the titles at whatever pay-per-view was before Christmas that year with Randy Orton, your WWE champion, John Cena, your world heavyweight champion, and then bringing back Batista. CM Punk left the company at this point, too. At the end of January 14, Batista wins the Royal Rumble. It's Batista up against Orton, but then Daniel Bryan gets retribution and payback, if you will, once more on Triple H for him costing him the WWE Championship at SummerSlam the summer before. And then WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan turned WrestleMania into WrestleMania winning two matches that night, defeating the game at the start of the show and then the closeout. WrestleMania 30 in the main event, Daniel Bryan, your WWE World Heavyweight Champion, defeating Orton and Batista in the main event of WrestleMania 30. So Orton hasn't been champion since then. Um, He's been putting over a lot of talent, uh, obviously, since. But uh, time is right to put the title back on him, especially if they're worried about ratings, getting all their uh, older people that used to watch wrestling that don't watch it anymore if they did come back to wrestling they're watching AEW and not WWE look what AEW did last year at All Out they put the title on Chris Jericho and I thought at the premiere of WWE Friday Night Smackdown on Fox last October Orton was going to be the one to win the title against Kofi Kingston however it was Brock Lesnar and then insert Cain Velasquez who they've since released and just everything else involved uh, with the history with Orton, Daniel Bryan, Drew McIntyre, just everyone uh, wrapped up into one. So Randy Orton will defeat Drew McIntyre and become once again a 14-time WWE champion to close out SummerSlam on Sunday. But then Retribution, as mentioned, to make a splash, I think they'll attack reveal themselves to close out the show leading into Monday Night Raw the following night. Now, who's going to be in Retribution? As mentioned, everyone's assuming it's going to be CM Punk or someone from NXT, which the latter of that, yes, is probably uh, somewhat right. Talked about very well could be more disciples for Seth Rollins. Uh, It could be Aleister Black, who's been on the shelf, uh, written off of TV there a few weeks back. Um... I honestly believe it's going to be whoever the mystery hacker is. They'll bring that back um, because you look at Retribution and you look at the mystery hacker, it's very, very similar. Um, And, I mean, they've just been wrecking havoc. Chainsaws and bolt cutters and just anything and everything that they've used. I mean, hell, they threw whatever they threw at that Transformer that blew up. So... It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, this weekend with the new WWE Thunderdome on SmackDown, SummerSlam, and Raw, respectively. Um, What will actually happen at TakeOver and SummerSlam, uh, along with is Retribution finally going to reveal themselves after attacking once more? Uh, And then what's the future of uh, Raw Underground moving forward with the new WWE Thunderdome? The new virtual experience that is so they say state of the art that'll have tons of video boards and cutting edge graphics along with lasers and drones and honestly whatever the hell else they throw our way so be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already also be sure to tune in to live reactions play play live right here on youtube for wwe friday night smackdown AEW Dynamite, WWE NXT TakeOver 30, WWE SummerSlam, and WWE Monday Night Raw before checking out my WWE Payback Preview predictions next week and then tuning in as well a week from Sunday, a week after SummerSlam for WWE Payback Live Reactions Play Play as well on Sunday, August the 30th. Hopefully enjoyed. Hopefully you'll tune in this weekend as WWE Let's us enter the Thunderdome.